Hello, and welcome to another fantastic, high-quality video on uh, the the Insane Presence channel. So today we're going to be talking about a few uh, a few things that I've seen in some comments and stuff. More, more specifically, we're going to be addressing some comments, or that I guess it's just it's one person commenting, but he uh, brought up a few points that are actually pretty important and pretty interesting that I feel like would be you know just fun to talk about. I have an actual like, another video that I was planning on publishing today, but uh, the project that I'm working on just is taking way longer than expected. Basically what I wanted to do is reconfigure this whole room and stuff like that and sort of like set up like a test bench area and like a works like a work area so I can have like an area to like build stuff and test components and things like that and clean up this whole like desk area and perhaps set up a better place to shoot in this room so there's like a more aesthetically pleasing backdrop but I was you know sort of vlogging all of that but I'm only like probably halfway through that and uh, it's about 7 p.m. and I have to be up at 3 a.m. for work so instead we're just gonna be going through these comments and uh, addressing some things because he brought up some some very interesting points so uh, you know we're just gonna we're gonna go through that real quick and then hopefully for the next video I will have all of this set up and you guys will be able to take a look at the new sort of set slash work area where I'll be shooting most of my videos from now on all right so all of these comments come from the user called no comply not sure uh, dude not sure what your username is but I mean it sounds kind of cool so and your profile picture looks pretty edgy so you know shout out to shout out to edgy profile pic but anyways just there's one quick question that i want to get out of the way first just because the uh, other longer question slash paragraph he wrote is a bit more something that i want to talk about in depth but for starters i want to address and one he left on the budget ssds video i did a while back is the only way to migrate windows 10 from my hard drive to a new ssd by cloning because some easier way would be great okay so personally i don't ever bother cloning my OS or anything really whenever I make a big enough change to my system where I have to like basically effectively move the OS from one drive to another or reinstall it I typically do exactly that I just reinstall it I typically somewhere on my desk behind me that's actually there I typically just have a flash drive with a pre-activated version of uh, Windows 10 on it um, just because it's like honestly it's a lot more simple than having to worry about compatibility or running to into issues with programs not booting properly if they can't find their source files correctly blah 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 that's a really dumb way of explaining it but personally I always just reinstall my OS I have like a version of it that I can just quickly install and activate uh, every time I need to now is that technically legitimate probably not but I definitely can't afford to be buying a fucking key for Windows every time I buy a new motherboard so uh, sorry but yeah so to, it, I know that doesn't really answer your question and in my experience personally to get everything working a hundred percent a hundred percent of the time it's not super there's no real quick and easy fix you can't just like change drives like if like here you're saying if you're trying to get your OS from a hard drive to an SSD there is no quick way of doing that or quick and foolproof way um, cloning does work I have never personally done it myself perhaps that's something for a future video if I ever want to bother trying to do that or if I have like a spare SSD laying around unfortunately I don't at the moment they're all in use in various builds and stuff um, but that is something I could try in the future um, one thing I will note is that uh, typically with cloning and stuff like that you need a dr two drives of exactly the same size I know that's not a hundred percent the case like I know there are ways to say move like the OS over to a smaller drive than its initial drive but that gets a bit more complicated and quite frankly doesn't seem all that worth it to me so that's just my take on it and then to get into the bulk of your uh, questions here and uh, uh, this is on the um, time to res resurrect the channel video but um, you're talking more specifically about uh, stream performance of the Ryzen 7 1700 and all sorts of stuff is to sort of sum it up you're asking about a lot of questions about OBS and ping in online games and stuff like that um, not so much specifically limited to Ryzen because all of these things can apply to really any streaming setup it doesn't matter what processor it is because these are more networking related questions I want to preface this by saying I'm by no means a networking expert but uh, I do have a 
fair bit of understanding as to how this works. So you say, I stream using OBS Studio and when I do, I cannot get good ping during online gaming when I usually have great ping. I know it has to do with the streaming bitrate with OBS Studio because I have common sense, but when I lower my bitrate from 6,000 kilobits per second, which is 6 megabits per second to, I, I think you were trying to say 4,500 4, kilobits or, uh, or 4.5 megabits per second seems to get better and that makes sense. Yes, it does. It's like, so long as I keep the bitrate lower than my actual internet upload speed, the ping will be reasonable, correct? Yes, that's correct. So basically, in where I look at it is you want to make sure that you have like a sig like at least a couple megabits per second um, just not being utilized by OBS or whatever program you're using. Um, typically I average around 10 to 12 megabits per second up with my connection speed uh, so, and I stream typically 720p 60 FPS uh, fast um, encoding whatever preset at uh, four megabits per second, which is okay quality wise. I still need to tweak it a bit more, especially considering that uh, YouTube allows for a lot more bit rate to be utilized. Like you can stream at a much higher bit rate on YouTube than you can on Twitch. Twitch is limited to six megabits per second and I believe YouTube is limited to 10. Last I checked, but that is also very heavily reliant on the resolution that you're streaming at. So there's, there's a lot more uh, variation when it comes to YouTube and streaming, but that's perhaps something to address in another video. So basically what you want to make sure is you have at least a couple megabits per second up to uh, kind of just dedicate to all the other stuff your computer's trying to do. Not only does fully saturating your upload speed um, increase the likelihood of dropped frames because obviously typically with, you know, even, even some of the best connections that you can buy, uh, your upload speed will fluctuate just as your download speed will. So if I am perhaps averaging 12 megabits per second up on my connection on a certain day, despite that fact, if I continuously rerun the speed test, it will vary, it'll, it'll sort of fluctuate, sometimes dropping to around 10 megabits per second on one test and then going up even higher than 12 megabits per second. It's constantly fluctuating, especially with OBS and XSplit. Uh, technically, they use constant bitrate, but in reality, the bitrate is not actually constant despite having that setting enabled. So your upload speed is constantly fluctuating or what OBS or XSplit is trying to output is constantly fluctuating. So if you don't leave some headroom and you're say constantly trying to stream at 10 megabits per second at on a 10 megabit connection, you're gonna run into issues because as your upload bandwidth sort of fluctuates up and down, the stream is going to randomly see that all of a sudden, oh wait, I can't push out all of the frames that I need to push out because my bitrate, I'm, I'm being throttled basically. Even if it is just a little bit that can cause problems, and of course if you are maxing out your upload bandwidth basically or very close to it, then that doesn't leave a ton of room for other programs to communicate. You also said here that I always thought online gaming utilized your download speed, not your upload, but I suppose upload would make more sense. It doesn't utilize a ton of your bandwidth, it, but it does use both upload and download. If you really think about it, like how, how do the other computers or other people that you're playing with know, how do their computers know what your character is doing and how does your computer know what they're doing? You're constantly in communication with the server or the other peers, depending on if the game used as dedicated servers or not. So if you say open up up task manager on a separate monitor and you do nothing other than play that game you'll see you'll see the two like your upload speed and your download speed constantly just like seeing little spikes in it as it sends data back and forth it's a very small amount of bandwidth admittedly but if you are trying clogging that up with just the upstream from your game or from your fucking <laughs> fucking exploit then you're gonna have issues because obviously there isn't a lot of room for the game to do its shit and communicate with the server or whatever the other peers and that can cause problems increase latency cause like big lag spikes and stuff like that so typically you want to have a couple megabits per second at least just for the game that you're playing at least that's the rule of thumb i go by it's not always a hundred percent foolproof as i said those speeds like your download and your upload speeds do fluctuate just as your isp gets more and less load on the node that you're on etc etc again i am not an expert in networking so like this is just stuff that I've kind of picked up on over my time working with this stuff. But you want to make sure that you're leaving a little bit of room for the other applications on your on your system. Typically, like I said, a couple megabits per second, uh, just that you're not constantly utilizing with your stream. So, for example, say you have a five megabit connection up. 
Uh, then I remember when I actually had that speed, I typically would stream at about 3000 to 3500 kilobits per second or 3 to 3.5 megabits per second, which technically was maybe a little bit too much, but I typically didn't run into issues with that. And then now that I'm on a 10 to 12 megabit connection, it's technically, technically I'm paying for 10 up, but in reality, it typically averages around 12. So I stream at around 4,000. Streaming it higher than that for 720p seems a little bit ridiculous, but then again, I don't know. There's a lot more ex uh, experimentation and stuff that I want to do with it to see if I can get rid of a lot of the artifacting and stuff that occurs on a live stream, especially at 60fps. So that again is something I want to address within the next couple videos because I have been working with XSplit a lot as opposed to OBS and it's been solving a lot of issues for me and I want to talk about Ryzen performance with XSplit versus OBS because there's some very interesting stuff going on there. And now you said, sorry, I just recently started using OBS. I was using NVIDIA's Shadow Play feature, but even with 1080p and 5.5 megabits, I had lots of checker boxing. That's uh, it's called artifacting, as I like to call it. Like it turned my 1080p stream to a 40p stream. Okay, so that's one thing to note. Um, when you're using things like OBS or Shadow Play. Uh, in OBS, you have the option of choosing between two codecs. Uh, if you have an NVIDIA card H.264, which is software encoding, which will leverage your CPU and NVENC, which utilizes the same chip or part of your GPU that uh, handles shadow play game capture. The nice thing about NVENC is that it you, uh, basically you see no performance hit because there's a dedicated part of your GPU that is uh, utilized to just capture gameplay or in this case capture and encode it in live stream. So you will see much less of a performance hit if any performance hit at all when using that codec. Unfortunately, that codec is also a lot more like compressed and it's just it's just not as good of a way to sort of encode video as H.264 which is partially why it runs so well comparatively, which is where all of that uh, checker boxing comes in, or the artifacts. In order to match the quality of an H.264 encode, you have to stream with NVENC at a much, much higher bit rate, and even then it still won't look quite as good. H.264 is just typically a much higher quality method of encoding. I'm not an expert on video encoding, but I mean, for example, when I edit and render stuff in Adobe Premiere, it gets rendered out at in using H.264 with a, a bunch of custom settings, obviously, but that's the encoder that I use for Adobe Premiere, and it makes videos come out pretty good looking with very minimal artifacting. So, you know, basically when you're trying to do that in real time in OBS, obviously it's a lot more taxing on your system, but it's still doable, assuming you set it up right. And uh, obviously Ryzen kind of kicks ass at it because of its, you know, 16 threads. It's great for it. Anyways, no comply. Thanks for those comments. Um, if any of you guys want to see me talk more in depth about uh, my knowledge of just how streaming works and how I configure OBS and XSplit and all the things that I've tried and been experimenting with, go ahead and drop a like on this video. Go ahead and leave a comment down below if you have any specific questions and I will try to address them perhaps just by responding to your comment or by making sort of a response video like this one. If you want to see more response videos like this where I typically go into more depth um, responding to your comments because obviously this is a lot easier than me going out and writing a fucking paragraph in the YouTube comment section, this is a lot easier for not only that person to see but a lot of other people as well if they have similar questions if you would like me to do more response videos like this go ahead and let me know in the comments section down below go ahead and leave comments of uh, like uh, questions that's that's what i was trying to say go ahead and leave some questions down below if you have any whether it's regarding streaming or anything tech related at all even like rise and stuff and uh, if I don't know the answer, I'll try to do some research and uh, get some information or perhaps test things out myself. If assuming it's not like, uh, dude, can you buy an 1800X and test it against your 1700X? Because no one has ever done that before. As long as it's not something that's like budget related or whatever, like budget limited, then I will totally do that because this that, that would be fantastic. I'd love to answer questions and learn some stuff along the way. Anyways, guys, thanks so much for watching this video. If it wasn't really up 
your alley, then I'm sorry it wasn't super fucking interesting because I just, I honestly, uh, I had that other video that I was working on, but it's just not going to be ready in time. And uh, I also had these comments pop up just a short bit ago and I kind of wanted to address them because I felt like they're actually pretty decent uh, questions and they're things that I know back when I started doing YouTube and streaming, I definitely was wondering about and I, you know, had to do a lot of stuff to sort of learn about it. So hopefully uh, this uh, has helped you out a little bit. No comply. Hopefully uh, you learned something here. If you have any more questions, dude, go ahead, leave them below. I'd be happy to answer them for you if I am capable. And uh, yeah, thanks to all you new subscribers. Thanks for all the support and whatnot on the various videos I have published on this here YouTube channel. Hope you all have a fantastic day. When this video goes live, I will probably be waking up at three in the morning, going to going to make some coffee at the, the, the good old Starbucks. <laughs> thanks so much for watching. I hope you guys are uh, are doing are doing swell.